Thank you very much, Michael. Um, I'm very pleased to be joining here uh, on the webinar. It's uh, quite a, an opportunity to join people together from across our country as we're working to improve and enhance uh, inclusive education in our provinces. Um, while we here in New Brunswick are seen in Canada as historic leaders in providing inclusive education, it has been identified to me by the Premier, Premier Allward, as a key priority to make improvements and provide enhancements to our inclusive education system. In October, uh, we had a change in government and I was named Minister. I'm very pleased and proud to be Minister of Education and Early Childhood Development. The, um, the importance of um, respect and diversity in our classrooms and in our schools is key to 21st century learning. Um, and so as a country, Canada is made up of diversity and our communities need to reflect this. Um, and more importantly, our schools need to do the same. My home community is at CFB Gagetown. Uh, we have diversity and trans transient population. We also have a uh, First Nations community. So there are two key principles of belonging and respect that's important for an inclusive um, education system. Uh, New Brunswick has had legislative uh, policy of inclusion since 1986. We're very proud of this as a province. And as I mentioned, we've, um, through the Premier, David Allward, has, have made this a pri one of my top three priorities as Minister of Education and Early Childhood Development. We know that um, inclusive education matters to schools and teachers, and good schools, we know, can be inclusive schools. We have a number of examples where it works, and if it works for one, it should work for all. Inclusive schools know how to identify and solve problems, provide leadership, commitment, and knowledge are critical. Teachers need support to make inclusion work. While it's very easy to say uh, we will have a policy and legislation mandating inclusion, the challenge is providing the support and leadership necessary. And in our province, I've been, as I've mentioned, been given that mandate to provide the support and leadership from the top throughout our system so that we're truly supporting teacher, teachers and other professionals in our school system to make sure that inclusion does work. Um, we cannot uh, put a forward legislation and policies and then abandon those that will practice it every day to make it work. So um, we've got a new commitment here in New Brunswick to provide the leadership from the Premier, from the Minister of Education throughout, down throughout the system to truly support uh, in making this work. And we know from teachers uh, and teachers assistants and others that uh, they get great satisfaction from making inclusion work successfully and we've just seen in our own province the National Inclusive Education Awards provided uh, through the Canadian Association of Community Living. The pride and the emotion and the satisfaction from teachers and teachers assistants and administrators, uh, parents and from students who benefit, students with disabilities and, uh, and uh, all students who benefit from successful inclusion. And again then that tells us if it works for some it should work for all. It matters for children uh, because we know that um, uh, it makes a difference for students with disabilities and their classmates. And I would encourage uh, everyone to check out Marlene Munn's story on the Department of Education's website here in New Brunswick. And we've uh, provided this stream and link right off of our, our Government of New Brunswick uh, Department of Education website. Um, as was mentioned by Michael, I have two daughters. Taylor is seven in grade two and Madison is, is four, turning five, uh, starting kindergarten this fall. And we want to make sure as parents, uh, myself and my wife, that, we, that they are able to benefit from inclusive schools and more than that, inclusive classrooms. It's very important that they grow up in a system, in a classroom setting that is respectful and is diverse. Because as we know, then when we leave school and we graduate, we're out in the community being employers or being employed, um, we have to live and work together. And uh, when my daughters go to school or daycare, we talk about how not one child is better or worse than the other, that we all have differences. And that's very important to us as a family and important to many families. 
And again, as I mentioned, we know it works. We have very successful schools, classrooms, where this works. And um, that tells us then if it can work in one school, it can work in all schools. Not being easy, but it's possible. And we know that student achievement uh, shows that diversity in our schools is connected to better resu results. And finally, it matters to me as an elected official, a member of the Legislative Assembly, and New Brunswick's Minister of Education. Uh, our government, through our Premier, uh, David Allward, is committed to strengthening and enhancing inclusive education practices in our schools. It is a key item in our election platform. And one of three priorities my, our Premier has given me when he asked me to take on this job. We have named uh, world export, expert Dr. Gordon Porter to um, conduct a survey of the current status, the strengths and weaknesses in New Brunswick. Um, ha, he will have working with him the um, expert as well, um, Dr. Angela O'Coin from the Francophone sector in particular at the University of Moncton to work with him and providing a current status of our strengths and weaknesses in New Brunswick with an updated action plan uh, by within six months so we can move forward as I mentioned on um, building on our strengths and improving upon our weaknesses. And final point, um, as I mentioned, that we will improve inclusion in New Brunswick schools. We will uh, we will want to collaborate with our partners here in New Brunswick, uh, involving our teachers, our teachers' assistants, our administrators, superintendents, and our parent groups and organizations. And we also want to collaborate uh, with others in Canada to do this. Um, together we can move forward and serve children well. It's not an easy process. Um, learning and teaching and um, life is not easy, but we put the determination and the um, willingness for everyone to work together, we can do better. And I would then finally encourage um, uh, people to check out the New Brunswick definition of inclusion over the recent months has been developed by, um, by, by um, all of those concerned, involved, and interested on our government website. We now have a definition of inclusive education. We have uh, uh, an interest in making this definition of inclusive education a policy. Uh, it starts with legislation. We have a definition. We will uh, move this into a policy statement. Uh, in addition to that, we have a commitment to form in a, a more formal or a strengthened appeal uh, and dispute resolution mechanism. We're very uh, interested as we, there are oftentimes issues that are very complex situations that can't be resolved. So we're looking forward to move in that direction as well. And uh, any chance that we can uh, utilize the experiences and opportunities from other uh, partners in Canada, we're very much looking forward to, to doing that and building a better, uh, a better system where we can improve uh, intervention, we can improve uh, achievement for all students.